This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. My name is Daniel Dixon and it's my honor to come to you again with God's holy word. May the Lord bless you as you listen. Pray with me now, would you? Gracious Father, we have come to your presence again because in your presence there is power. In your presence there is hope. In your presence there is forgiveness. In your presence there is mercy. So we just want to say thank you for giving us the opportunity to breathe the oxygen of life. Father, your word comes forth and all we ask you is that please forgive all our sins. Let the blood of Christ cleanse every iota of sin in our lives. And let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Father, please, my listeners, my viewers, and I, and all of us over the world, we pray, O oh God, that you will make our hearts permeable for your word. And we declare and decree that as the snow falls and, and the rain falls and soaks the soil and never returns, but that causes the soils to yield fruits and crops for the eater and for the grower. You said your word will go forth and never come back the same until it has fulfilled its purpose. Let it so be, O oh God, as your word comes forth. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And so the title for this devotion, this short sermon, is going to be um, Flee. Child of God, flee, flee, child of God. And we find our scripture in the book of uh, First Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 18. And let's hear God's holy word. It says, flee from sexual immorality. For every other sin a person commits is outside the body. The sexual immoral person sins against his own body. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. The sexual immoral person sins against his own body. May the Lord bless his holy word. Amen. And God made man in his own image. And in the image of himself, he created them, male and female. So the truth is that God has made every man like himself. Man is so special to God. The scripture tells us, as David declares, that in Psalm 139, verse 14, in Psalm 139, verse 14, it, David says something beautiful there. He says, I'll praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The psalmist says, I know your works, and they are so wonderful. I know that fully well. This is David saying. It's been the scripture tells us that we are so special. In Hebrew, Hebrew, the word for image is telem, which means carefully carved out. In Genesis chapter 1, 26. So you see, the Trinity, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Son, God the Father, they, they plan. No wonder. God said, let us make man in our own image. So we are being made, we have been made after the likeness of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All created things were simply called forth and it became. But you see, God said, let us do man together. Let us make man. Let us come with man. Let us craft man. We are body, soul, and spirit. Yes, we have the breath of God inside of us. So the scripture says we were, we were made higher. We were made special, lower than angels. You know, David was so obsessed with the love of God for man so that he mentioned, what is man that you are mindful of him? In Psalm 8, verse 4. Now on this earth, God made us as princes and principalities to rule the earth because we are told in the Holy Scriptures that God gave the man and the woman dominion. He gave dominion to rule the earth under the plan. 
of his own plan. God's love for us is so special. And it's important to understand this, that God has carried your destiny. I, I'm just talking about how special that we are and you are before God. God has carved your destiny in his palms. He has in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, we are told that God has special plans of hope, plans of peace and not of evil. So a plan to give you peace and hope. For the future. That is who God is. So now listen very carefully. Do not forget that every good thing comes under attack. There is the old ancient serpent, the dragon, who started in the Garden of Eden to destroy and to confuse man. Satan has worked tirelessly to destroy the destiny of every soul. Why? Because you are special. Again, why? Because you were special. Because you were made with a distinction. You were made specially. And I was made specially. So one of the things that determines who you are is your capacity to identify who you are. If you are blind to your own identity, I take that again. If you are blind to your own identity, you are a lost soul. May the Lord make this far away from us. Yes, so the Lord tells you in his holy scripture, he tells me in his holy scripture that you have been carved in God's image and that is who you are. You are a person with a special destiny. And Satan will steal only those who do not know who they are. If you do not know you are a king, you will sit on the seat of servants. If you do not know you can fly, you will keep walking. If you do not know you are an eagle, you will behave like a chicken. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and I love this so much. It said, the Lord says, you are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy nation, God's special people who have been chosen and called out of darkness into his marvelous light. The enemy knows this truth and works to degrade the purpose of man. Throughout scripture, it is clearly identified that the only thing that is able to destroy the wonderful man that God has created is his lust. Lust is the only thing that has power to destroy man. His desires destroy him and his passions. In other words, the only thing that can destroy you and destroy and make us deformed and bent out of shape is that God has made us so special that it's only our lust and our desires and our urges and our passions that can derail us. The great controversy progresses and it rages on and man who has been made in the image of God has been blinded to his identity. Man has forgotten his identity and has yielded to his lust and fleshly desires which are to destroy him. God made man and planted him on the throne in the garden. Unfortunately, when the woman went there to the tree, her desires lured her. Her desires. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, the scripture says that she saw that it was good for food. She saw that the tree was good for food. Her lust for the food, her desire led her to connect to the enemy who also played and toyed with her. The enemy said in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4, that you will not die, but you will be like gods. But they already were made in the image of God. Remember, the enemy was trying to play with her, that you be like God, but already man had been made like God. Eve knew that already. But the lust for the food led her to a great fall. Esau, we know, the brother of, of Jacob, sold his birthright because he could not control his passion to eat. Samson, we are told, fell as a judge and a deliverer of Israel. He was the deliverer of Israel, but he fell flat because he could not control his fleshly desire. Now here is a scripture for the devotion. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 to 19, it says, Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have from God? And you are not your own. The Lord says to you, these 
there are many sins. And all sins are seriously serious. But there is a sin that occupies a higher degree. Of destruction. It has a destruction capacity. And that sin is sexual immorality. The scripture says, flee, run away. He says, run, flee. That is the command. Pastor, run. Elder, run. Church member, flee, run away. Politician, run. The word says to you, young man, run away from sexual immorality. It will destroy the purity of the wonder of the image of God inside you. It is serious. The Lord says, flee, run away. Do not stand close to fornication. Do not stand close to pornography. Do not stand close to masturbation. Flee, flee, flee. Do not stand to all of those things, lesbianism, gayism. The Bible says we should flee all sexual perversion. The scripture says you will destroy yourself. The Lord says, do not you know that you are a special person? Do you not know who you are? You are a priest. You are a prince. You are wonderfully made. An eagle, a child of God, for who Jesus shed his blood. Why has an eagle become a chicken? Sexual immorality tells us to flee. Today, it has become the order of the day. Men cannot control their passions and desires any longer. Man has fallen from throne where God planted him. And the scripture says he has been trampled on. The word of God has been thrown away. The man who God has made has fallen apart. Great men today fall because of their inability to control their lust. You will hear a pastor has fallen. Many ministers today are struggling with lust and sexual immorality. Church members are struggling and the youth are struggling. We who are wonderfully made are being degraded by the flesh, by passion and our desires. The flesh has been a powerful tool that Satan is using to fail many great men. Christians, and for that matter, the body of Christ are struggling with overcoming the desires and passions of the flesh. But there is hope. Jesus overcame Satan in the wilderness. And he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Christ subjected his flesh to death and has overcome. Christ is calling to all of us that we should stand up. It is time for us Christians to keep our relationship with Christ pure. It is time to restore ourselves to the wonderfully made image of God. It is time that we must flee from all of it. Things are falling off the edge and we must place them back in our churches, in our homes, in our jobs. Sexual immorality has taken over. We are afraid to talk about it. We find our youth and our adults secretly involved, but we are mute. The power of God is not able to manifest on the church anymore. Individuals, we have become so cold because of the takeover of the flesh. Today, the world heralds lust and immorality. And even the children of God dance to the music of sexual immorality on the television, on the internet, on, on various forms of media. Sexual immorality is now heralded. Today, sexual immorality has Wine to the degree that it has become normal and natural with Christians today. What is wrong is now seen as right. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, the scripture says to us, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes. He says, flee, flee, flee. See today. Gays and lesbians want their rights. Sexual immorality, flee. Today, there are those who are married to sex toys. Some are married but want to gratify themselves with toys all over anything that is sexual perversion. Today, many masturbate and they think it is all right. Sexual immorality, he says, flee. Fornication is a normal today. You have a boy, you have a girl, and you find that they are all in a relationship. They are in affairs. As this one comes to an end today, God is calling to us because he says that I am capable of breaking the chain. I want to restore you to your wonderful self. Look, today our youth break their virginity before they marry. Adults have sex but do not, uh, that are not married. Where is the future of the church? Where is the future of the community? Oh yes, the entire body and the children of God have fallen 
to the desires of the flesh. It is time to live a holy life. Uh, you must stand for God. Adults must stand for God. Children must stand for God against this sexual perversion, sexual immorality that is taking us away. It is time for the church to stay holy for God, so says the Lord. Today, we dress. Our dressing has become perverted and all sexually propelled. Look at the way we dress now. Sometimes even in church, women dress showing themselves to sexually attract. Our dressing today has become engineered to sexually provoke. Even in the church, there is no decency. We forget we are coming to the presence of God. Satan has chosen to use this as a weapon to de derail the kingdom of God. We must not yield. We must not yield. We must flee. Demons progressively work to ruin the cause of God. My brother, my sister, the Lord is calling us. Bishop, my pastor, president, father, teacher, elder, youth, young man, young woman. The sexual urges that you feel towards men, towards women, towards girls and boys. The pornography you secretly watch. Your phone is full of nude and sex videos. Some of you are secretly in affairs. There are demons that Satan has sent out that controls to derail man from his power. Now today God says, come to me for I will take you back. He says judgment will come. He says your body is a temple. He will destroy anyone who desecrates his temple. Satan goes beyond. He brings disease to those who pervert his temple. Many Christians today have spiritual husbands and spiritual wives. It's all going on. It's Satan and his men are taking all of us because of all these little, little things that we think has, uh, we have compromised ourselves. Now the Lord is calling us. He says sexual immorality has caused a mess. Many who are into this have less power. You cannot pray. You cannot control yourself. You cannot connect to God. The power of God has given us that we are wonderfully made are all gone down. The Lord is calling us today. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, flee. God has power. My brother, my sister, he saved me. He can save you. The command is flee sexual immorality for every sin that a man commits. It's outside. The sexual immorality destroys the body. My brother, my sister, I would like you to pray with me. Sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes you find that you want to stop it. Sometimes you know that you want to walk in God's path, but it's not easy. Today, the Lord says, tell me. Tell him that, Lord, this is my problem. I want you to take it for me. Lord, I give my life to you, and I reconsecrate myself to you. Lord, have mercy upon me. And the Lord will do. As I pray with you, tell the Lord to take control. Give your entire heart and self to him. Leave it. It's a sacrifice. This is what God wants. And he will control you. Very soon, Jesus descends in the clouds of heaven. He's asking if you will find any of his for him. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus. My viewers and I have come before you. The word says we should flee sexual immorality. We should flee our desires and our lusts and our passions. Because our bodies are temples for you. Oh God, we falter. Oh God, we are not okay because most of us are falling in all these drama and all of the problems that are going on with lust. We are asking, oh God, forgive our sins. You are the Lord who forgives. You are the Lord who forgives. Lord, forgive us. Lord, cleanse us. Lord, cleanse us in the name of Jesus. As those who watch are, are telling you these problems, anyone with weakness is telling you, Lord, I pray that you touch them. Holy Spirit, we pray that you touch each and every individual that is reconsecrating self to you. We pray that you will break every powers of Satan, every power of spirit, spirits of loss and spirits of sexual immorality that pervert the children of God. We command you and we rebuke you in the name of Jesus that you will depart and be gone. Father, take hold of your children and bless them. Take hold of all your children that have come in your presence. And Lord, deliver for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, 
Amen. May God bless you.